The closer I got to the freight elevator, the, well, the thicker it got and the more sluggish I got. As I arrived near the elevator, it dinged and opened. Through the elevator appeared a man that I did not recognize. Tethered to the man was a quite formidable and imposing red monster who noticed me immediately. The monster was a dingy, dull red with unimpressive nubs protruding maybe an inch or so up out of his forehead. He arrogantly tried to tell me his name repeatedly, and I washed it out of my head each time as he tried. As he was doing this, I made myself as dense as possible as I could feel him getting angrier and angrier with each attempt as trying to force his name upon me. As his host started walking towards me, the red monster rushed me. I could tell he was extremely powerful, and I only had one chance. I extended my hand out and caught him by his throat, which swept him off his feet as the rest of him kept wanting to travel forward. This would have been impossible in real life physics due to our body size differences, but with this momentum and my increased density, I slammed him to the ground. I looked into his yellow slit eyes and growled, It looks like we have a problem. It caught him off guard, but only for a split second. He immediately began channeling his energy back to what I knew would be a battle of attrition that neither one of us could technically win. Meanwhile, his host, laughably unaware of the situation unfolding next to him, had subconsciously stopped to itch, the altercation manifesting as confusion and disorientation for a second. Then with it passing, he started to walk off. The distance between the two at first weakened the beast, then the unknowingly began dragging the imposing red creature behind him. The monster cursed at me as his power weakened as the distance between him and his host increased. I woke myself up before he could finish whatever filth he was about to say. I didn't want to hear it. It wasn't something I would consciously comprehend and it wasn't going to matter soon anyway. We had to get out of whatever this place was as expeditiously as possible. Chapter 15 XPX Gets Labbed Day 2 it was almost time for XPX to get labbed, but I needed to tell him something, and I needed to tell him fast. Double XL still had some food left, so I told him I needed to borrow a little bit of the food. He said he didn't mind. I also needed to borrow a piece of paper. I took some of the Double XL's food and flicked it out the window to get the seal mutant's attention. It was a success because they half wobble, half walked over, and started snarfing and licking up the pieces. Apparently they didn't mind eating up cooked versions of themselves, that's just as well. Double XL looked at me quizzically, either to remain simple in appearance, or because he was legitimately intrigued now as to what I was up to. I wrote XPX a quick note so he would know a few things, because I thought they were really important with a Toss this back to me right away and I'll dispose of it immediately. So in between screams up and down the hall, I wrote XPX a note, and hoped he would believe me as horrible as this note was going to be. I was sure to write it on a surface where it couldn't somehow be retransposed back off also to be extra careful. I also wrote it with my back to the camera so they couldn't read it off the camera if anyone was looking. XPX, I saw your daughter in my dream. Her name is Esther, she told me. She liked to boot me on the nose, and she was very helpful and seemed happy. I'll explain later. I'm sorry about what happened to her. You have to, got to stop blaming yourself. It isn't your fault. It's this place. We're getting out of here within the next 24 hours because something big is happening. Please be ready. Toss this back to me right away, and I'll dispose of it immediately. XDS. I crumpled it up so it would get to him, and tossed it to him. He read it emotionlessly in the camera's shadow, crumpled it back, and tossed it back. That's all that happened in the span of ten seconds. I rubbed the last of Double XL's food he spurred me all over the piece of paper, crumpled it back up, and flicked it out the window to the seal mutants. I heard paper ripping and tearing as two of them started to tug over who, over who would get the glory of devouring the biggest piece of meat paper. That was all she wrote for the evidence. It was a calculated risk, and there was a chance that nobody was even watching between security watching their monitor bank and the doctors watching their monitor bank, but nobody came to get mad at us. 
It was about time for XPX to get labbed, so he slid his picture of Esther over and said, Take care of her, guys. I'll be back in a little bit. And he stood up. Double XL stopped the picture and respectfully picked it up and wiped it off. Then Double XL put the photograph in his pocket and said, Will do, man. In a minute or two, three orderlies showed up, formed around XPX, and walked into the lab. I'd never noticed that before. Weird. It's like they needed to be absorbing or forming something away from them or around him. As he walked away, I noticed the spork was still an issue. I guess they weren't really worried about it. Security sure is getting pretty relaxed. Chapter 16. Documenting and Dozing. Evening, Day 2. Double XL hadn't taken his nap yet with everything going on, and I didn't even have time to let him read the note to XBX, and it was private anyway. I really didn't know how to address things with him or even where to begin. Right around that time, we heard a helicopter take off, and then I remembered some days earlier we had noticed a helicopter coming and thought it unusual. I suspected the actual person making the calls here with the Red Bastard took off to go deal with the next hellhole they're running. With the helicopter gone, a sort of weight lifted off a of double XL, and he lay, let, he lay down, seemed to mouth, them, mouth some things to himself, and drifted off. I went through my notebook, waiting for XPX to get back and for double XL to slip into night terrors. I opened to the page in my three ring binder and put Helicopter Dude in the bubble above the head doctor and his friend in the bubble with the dotted line to the right. Thinking back now, I imagine what XPX must see every time he looks around this place. His daughter must have hung herself around here. I closed my eyes for a second and then opened them again, seeing Esther hanging in every single corner of this place by her neck, then by her wrists. She looked peaceful to me, but I imagine the scene must get twisted into a macabre exorcist nightmare of a dead child's body thrashing to somehow trying to escape from this thing, even though she's technically dead. If that's what XPX sees, I could imagine why he would never look up, as that is truly horrible to have playing on loop. Then I looked at the cubby entryway into the hallway, and there's Esther standing there looking at me. Why are you so sad, she asks, then went to boot me on the nose, but decided it was probably the wrong time. I responded to her by saying that her dad feels responsible for her dying here, and that I wanted to help in some way, but I don't know what to do. Esther said back to me, Oh, it isn't his fault that I died. It is really me who died trying to save him. I left him a note saying this, but they took it away from me. They were using me as a lev... Uh, as leverage? I completed for her. Yes, as leverage, she exclaimed, then booped me on the nose and smiled and got sad again. Esther continued, Daddy was one of the earlier ones to get captured here with me back when Mommy's girlfriends and children were allowed... After me, there were no more. They all got sent away. What were they using you as leverage for, Esther? I inquired. Well, she wondered to herself, I don't really know, but Daddy always wanted to keep me safe, and they captured us together and made him do things, and said he had to in order to keep me safe. They did this to all the daddies, and I didn't know how else to handle it, so I sacrificed myself. Like a star that would burn really bright for all to see. Well, Esther, I said, I think you did save a lot of people. Wherever they got to go, at least they didn't have to be here. You really think so? She asked excitedly. Oh, yes, I responded. I imagine all the men here are very smart and ask for new information about their loved ones to confirm their safety from time to time. Phone calls and so on. I'm sure they're all fine and waiting to be reunited. I've seen pictures and stuff, and they're still here working, so that's what I figure. This made her very happy, and she booped me on the nose again and said, Oh, no, it's time for me to sing a song to your friend now. It's time to sing a song to your friend now. Thank you for watching over my daddy. Please tell him I love him and to stop feeling guilty about me. And then I woke up to double XL thrashing in bed. I scooted over him to try to get a feeling for what was going on. I waited for my heart to come up with a response. It didn't take long to come up with something. And not before too long, XPX was back and double XL was awake. And it was my turn for labs. Chapter 17 and getting labbed. Day 2. Double XL slid back XPX's picture of Esther, and I picked up my three-ring binder and waited for the orderlies to come get me. When they came, I remembered about my pen and went to put my pen in my pocket. I did this without even thinking, and the three orderlies almost in chorus said, No, the pen stays. 
I tossed the pen back on my mat and feigned a startled surprise and went with them to the lab. The irony lost on them that there's like 25 pens in the lab if I wanted to go on a stabbing spree, which I don't. It made sense, though. Good on them for not letting me get close to them with a pen. Not that I'm fast enough to take out the two in front without the one in back getting me, but who wants to take a pen to the neck or the throat anyway? Not them. 